Good afternoon. Welcome to our sixth AMA or Ask Me Anything. I am your host, Kangshi Mehta, also the moderator of this session. I'm a member of the Pet Chef team, and this is a partnership with the Thinkly. Today we have with us dog trainer and behaviorist and founder of Perfect Paws, Nikhil Sampath. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. Yes. Let's begin. So tell us your story. How did you come about becoming a dog trainer and a behaviorist? Very simple. I got a pet in uh, around 2008, a German Shepherd. Oh. Yeah, that was my first pet. And uh, after six months or seven months of age, he started showing some signs of the guarding uh, behavior where he would not allow strangers to come near and then things used to go a little bit uneasy for the family as well as people visiting us. That is the time I thought of basically becoming a dog trainer to train my pet. <laughs> and that's, oh, that's how I started mean. my journey. <laughs> so, and then was there any course or anything that you had to Yeah, do? I basically did some courses initially and then in 2017 actually I went to one of the mentors who under whom I got trained was Shirin Merchant. Mm -hmm. And through her, then there was one person, uh, one another trainer who was uh, well known in uh, UK. He came down over here, Mr. John Rogerson. So got trained under him as well for all the aggression behavior type of courses, the therapy dog training course, etc. <laughs> so that's how. So till the time I had my pet, I used to just train for my friends and relatives. And once I lost him in around 2020, before that I used to train commercially, but just one or two dogs in a month, not more than that. But okay. after 2020, it became like so good. I trained about 16 to 18 dogs online in Mumbai as well as in Chennai. And then since then, the journey has been just growing. <laughs> so currently, maybe I've trained about 22, 20 to 30 dogs like till now. <laughs> wow. In Mumbai and Chennai. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. Yes. So this session is, of course, all about people who are adopting a puppy for the very first time. Right. So tell us what what needs to be done? What sort of puppy proofing that needs yeah. to be done before you get a dog home? The first thing before you get a dog, it's like a small kid coming into your house. How do you um, proof your house for the small kids? You don't keep small things around which can go in his mouth, which you can gulp it down, etc. Not so that he does not get hurt. There are so many things which you have to take care of so that he is not kind of he cannot access those things which can be dangerous. Like I have an instance where uh, during the wedding season there were guests in the house and somebody just dropped a earring, a gold mm -hmm. one. The puppy picked it up and gulped it down. <laughs> <laughs> they had to did rush it show to, up in the poop later. <laughs> you know, it did not show up for two days. Then basically they were scared, so I suggested they called me up. So I suggested go and get it him checked. Like so, they did an endoscopy. They removed it from the intestine. Oh, a small puppy God. of about you can say three months like age because at that time they are exploring everything they don't have hands like us to kind of touch and feel so that's only their mouth so whatever goes in their mouth different different textures they want to bite here they want to bite there they want to feel a different texture here and there and then whatever they like they will just take it in <laughs> that is one major thing which we have to take care puppy proofing means actually keeping him the, your puppy safe in many aspects like so he should not get hurt. One major thing what people do is when pup, uh, during the puppyhood, they put a collar sometimes, they put mm -hmm. a leash also and leave the puppy unattended. That's That okay. causes major problems. And sometimes they don't put the leash, but the collar gets stuck in a small drawer, hook or something like that, and they're oh. not attending. So the puppy's poor thing is lying stuck around over there till the time he does, receives help. <laughs> So all those things happen. So puppy proofing has a lot of uh, importance during the initial days. Plus what happens when a puppy is coming home, You everybody in the house has to be at the same level. It cannot mm -hmm. be that some people don't want and some people want. So majorly we have issues at that particular level. So the family, if they are not together, then the puppy faces a lot of trauma because some of them want him, some of them don't want him. So some of them treat them very well and the others don't. And then once they grow a certain age, then they don't like that behavior. Mm -hmm. Then they know, now I can control. Then the aggression sets in towards the people who, who don't treat him proper. 
So all those things like it's a stage wise, like the puppy usually reaches its uh, teenage practically about between seven to eight months and then he matures slowly. So that is the time he knows the, what I can do and what I cannot do. So the best time to train them is the early stages between the two months and the six months. Between this, if you train okay. your puppy, that's the ideal time. Many times people ask me, what is the best time to train my puppy? My vet has said once he is five months, six months, then train. Somebody mm -hmm. tell them, no, you train them immediately. My take is that the training of your puppy starts the day he enters your house. Initially for the potty training, okay, the pee and poop, very important. Uh, parents have to ask the breeder or from wherever they have got the puppy, does he pee or poop on certain surfaces? So mm -hmm. the breeder must have used newspapers. He may have used a coir mat. He may use have a cloth. He may use that. You may use. He may have used the pee pads. So mm -hmm. if you have that thing in hand. You can prepare your house when you get your puppy home because he's traveled that distance. When he comes home and you put him down and he's going to pee over there initially within mm -hmm. minutes because when he's in your lap, he will not pee. One thing is very important that puppies don't like to dirty themselves. They want to keep themselves clean. So wherever they usually sleep and uh, rest, that area they want it clean. So they will not pee and poop around over there. So as soon as a puppy comes home and supposing the breeder said, I have trained them to go on the newspaper or a pee pad, keep it ready. When you come, put the puppy down over there and play with the puppy around that area itself. So he'll have tiles, he'll have those particular surface which he's used to, he will pee, immediately you start treating him. Yeah, good boy, good boy, good boy and all that stuff or good girl, whatever. So that how that is how the puppy's training starts the first day. And very important is nowadays the breeders have been giving away puppies at the age of 30 days, 40 days, which is actually not correct because the first 60 days is what the puppy needs to stay with the mother. Correct. The mother is going to train the puppy for major things, separation anxiety, toilet training, how to basically nibble on their siblings, not to bite hard. All those things are trained by the mother. So the puppies who come in your hand, which is not 60 days old or not stayed with the mother, you practically have lost that particular period where he could have been trained by the mother. So the training for you would become a breeze. And majorly what happens is the puppies which are adopted from the streets sometimes, you know, like what happens is that they, they have been parted with their mother. They don't have any siblings around. They have been alone. They have faced a lot of trauma, etc. That is the time a lot of training is required from day one to see to it that they okay. get used to, they get bonded with the family and nothing goes wrong at a later date. Like so This is my take usually for the new family, uh, first time owners of dogs because the families which have already had dogs earlier, they practically know what has to be done. So it becomes easy for them to adopt the second one <laughs> in the house. And I'm assuming that everyone has to do a ton of research because getting a dog is a massive yes. responsibility. Very important. So please, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you, you tell them, please research what breed, the temperament, yes. whether you yes. have kids in the house, so which breed Correct. of dog to get in the house, your, the Correct. size of the house, size of and the whether house. you have the time. Correct. First thing is first, if you don't have the time, don't get a puppy. That's very important because you need to give them proper time, proper attention to get so to see to it because a puppy is like your family a person in a family mm -hmm. like how you I will train. yeah <laughs> it's like you know you need to train that puppy properly so the boundaries have to be set when they are young when they are between two and six months what happens is their mind is blank it's like a blank notebook you write down whatever you want for them and they will follow that through their life but if you don't train them initially they already written the book in their language they'll just do yeah. what they feel like and then it becomes a little difficult for the parents who don't have the time to train them because then the consistency and everything is very important because we have been training dogs which have been three years old, four years old. We have trained dogs with disabilities like hearing issues, uh, sight issues, etc. Uh, once they are five to six years and when they are trained at the young age and if they have these issues, it's a little easier for us to train. But if they are not been trained earlier, then it becomes a little difficult. So. These all things have to be very much in place. Like So breed specific is a research which you need to do depending on your house, whether you have children, whether you 
depending on the climate where you are staying what type of food etc you can afford is very important like you know now there are another thing which people have got a little bit of a issue with the food like what should be feed our puppy mm. so many brands of food which is available so many things and there is always a war going on between the fresh food suppliers and the <laughs> the dry food the kibble yeah, yeah yeah the dog food the processed food so i just tell the parents like those who have this questions i said if i send you to a restaurant to eat only one thing which is processed and you eat day in and day out how many days you will you like it so accordingly it goes for the puppies also well it all depends on what you are doing how much comfort zone you are into by giving them a fresh kind of a meal at least once a day fresh meal i mean to say is not that you need to give whatever you are eating with salt and sugar and everything but something basically you should consult a nutritionist for that help like so you can feed a mixed kind of a meal to your pets the dog food once in a day and the fresh meal another day another time of the day so if there is a mix or you always having a balance between the nutrients like so many people say you know the dog food is the best some say you no know, the dog food is the worst fresh food is the best <laughs> both are good in a way but you need to strike a balance between the two sometimes so now i'm like now new pet parents have a lot of concerns uh when it comes to let's let's start with the first one toilet training so how do you go about it see as i said the toilet training starts from the day one of the particular puppy coming home but if you missed out on that usually again the puppy has got a kind of a mindset they look at the surfaces so like if he speed on certain surface and if you are not told anything to him he will continue doing it over there okay now you keep a pee pad the puppy goes and tears those pee pads means you understand that that puppy has got no particular relevance whether it's a paper or a pee pad or so he's not knowing what it is so he's going to tear those things so then you try something else like a door mat so microfiber door door mat etc like which can help and see on which surface the puppy is comfortable to pee the minute you find that puppy is inclined to pee in this type of a surface see to it that you kind of put him over there you need to keep statistics during the day the best time to train them is when they get up so during the okay. night time if they are in a confined area you will find that they are not peeing or pooping around in that as soon as you take them out and keep them in a different surface immediately they will leave so if a puppy is old kind of 3 months 4 months and the toilet training has not been done initially the best way to do the toilet training is using crates it becomes very easy in the sense like it's a technique basically so the crate training is important for the toilet training again so everything goes hand in hand like so the toilet training many times the people no no he is not listening we told him so many times go here go there but he is not going to understand he does not know your language he just knows doggy language <laughs> <laughs> whatever we do is what we are going to teach him where to pee and where to poop so usually i suggest to them that keep him in a confined area so that he does not leak in the whole house so what mm-hmm. happens confinement i don't say a small like you know 2 by 2 square or something like that you have a room half of the room you dedicate to your puppy so that he does not come to the other side of the half like you know and there you can keep certain different surfaces and see which one is comfortable to pee second important thing is keep statistics when he is getting up after getting up what time he is peeing after eating how much time he pees or poops usually puppies require to pee about you can say 8 to 10 ten times a day poop maybe 2 3 times a day depending on what you are feeding and how they are eating kind of like so that is the time we need to see to it that we give proper attention like when i bought i used to board puppies at home train them and then give it to the pet parents initially many times i used to do that and i had my pup, uh, dog also that time my, in my house so i would not let that puppy meet my dog so i could i would keep him in a different room kind of a thing i have that advantage <laughs> so mm-hmm. what happens is because i don't want a large dog standing on the small puppy and this puppy gets traumatized with the large dog looking at mm-hmm. him like you know and although socialization of dog to dog and everything can come little later once they understand certain things like this. so coming back to this part so once you have confined i would keep them in my sight i know he speed 15 minutes before i'll play with him for half an hour or something i'll knock in between he's going to pee so what i will do is i will go back towards the area where i want him to pee so supposing there is a pee pad around over here so i'll play with him around that pee pad okay so there okay. is already the uh, pee smell on the pee pad He will cross those things. So when supposing now while he's crossing, he stops and he pees. 
treat, treat, treat. You will know when I'm peeing over here, this spot, I'm getting a lot of treats. When I pee somewhere else, nothing is happening. Nobody is telling me anything. So you need that you need to be very careful. Whenever a puppy pees, people say, no, people have told us you should take your nose, that puppy's nose and put it over there, make him smell or take a newspaper, hit him on the nose. So next time you'll not pee and all that stuff. So I will say you keep that newspaper for yourself. When the puppy pees somewhere where you have marked and he's not peeing there, and but somewhere else, you hit that newspaper on your head because <laughs> you failed in guiding him. Because initially, they need a lot of, lot of patience, a lot of guidance where they need to understand which is the area which is good for peeing and pooping kind of. So it's a process. Usually, if the parents consistently, properly take the guidance from the trainers, it becomes easy. It's mm -hmm. not like a switch on and off. <laughs> But you need to be consistently monitoring your puppy and keep the statistic approximately what times he's going to pee. So take him at that zone. Some people want their puppies to pee in their bathroom because initially you cannot take them down because of the vaccines are not in place. Till the time the vaccines are not in place, training them outside is difficult. So they want him to be peeing in the bathroom. So then they say, you know, we kept the bathroom door open also, but he's not going there. But what did you do to make him understand to go there? That's very important. So that's again a process which we tell the parents how to guide your puppy to pee at a certain spot. Like, So it becomes easy then once they understand. Training the puppies are easy. Training humans is difficult. <laughs> that should be the quote <laughs> of the day. <laughs> that's okay. So, once they, so once, they, once they pee at a desirable spot, you reward them so that they understand that... Yeah. That's yes. the right, that's the correct that's place the right to time. pee. And when they don't pee at the correct spot and when they pee at a wrong spot, don't tell them anything. Clean that spot when he is not seeing you. Ah, Very important. Why? Because now supposing you're busy and he wants your attention. He knows that when he will be at a wrong spot, you will come and talk to him, scold him. He does not know what you are scolding or whatever. That emotions he's not going to understand. You'll scream at him. He says, ah, you coming and talking to me. Okay, next time again, I'll be there. Come, talk to me. Like I'm getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very important that whenever he pees at a certain spot, you reward him for the correct spot. And whenever he pees at the wrong area, don't say anything. Just when he is not watching you, just clean up that area. And cleaning again is very important. I'm using certain particular cleaning agents. I usually prefer a white vinegar with water because that mm -hmm. removes the smell from that floor. Like Then there are a lot of other things available in the market. So the pet shops sell you that. But I don't know how successful they are because a different type of an aroma the puppy can get a little bit offended by that like you know many times they use alcohol based substances which are very harmful for them so you need to be very careful when you pick it up from the market mm -hmm. open market there are so many things available you'll get so confused so the safest is the white vinegar one part white vinegar four to five parts of water and just clean it up cheapest <laughs> cheap and easiest and this it's it's yes. it's just rest it's all these ingredients are resting in your on in your kitchen now for puppy mouthing everyone has these issues puppy mouthing is again basically he has no hands or legs he's going to explore everything through his mouth so there are multiple reasons for his mouthing on you usually mm -hmm. they go for the skin that's soft and what happens is when they go for the human skin your tendencies ah you go back when you go back he's oh lovely he's playing with me again he comes on your hand like you know so whenever they are mouthing there are a few things which we train the pet parents like how to kind of distract them what type of toys to use when they are mouthing you then how to control that mouthing because the puppy has to understand that his teeth on our skin is not allowed it's the bite inhibition starts from there he needs to know in future also when he grows up his mouth if he's coming and we are getting hurt so he should not be doing that. Particularly, this is a difficult situation when there are kids in the house and their puppy is mouthing. Mm -hmm. Because the kids will not stand. They will run over here and there. Whenever. So when they run, the puppy enjoys it. Okay, so he's running behind them. They'll scream. The puppy says, oh, lovely. They're playing a game with me. So again, he'll go and kind of continuously. Any flowing thing he's going to catch. Anything which is moving, he's going to catch. He'll bite your furniture, he'll bite your sofa covers, this, that, everything. So what happens is the mouthing, puppies are going to mouth. You need to con kind of control their mouthing. Usually they will start mouthing when they are excited, after meals. So these are the timings which basically you need to take care of. And again, there are a lot of training methods. There are, there are props which are there which you can use. 
the cheapest one is you take one piece of cloth tie knots every 6 inches keep it in your dip it in water put it in the freezer remove it and play with him when he is mouthing you love that and that's one of the cheapest toys which you can make on your own so that kind there are a lot of other things which are available in the market so that can be kind of used for him again people use tug toys when they are mouthing now, tug toys are very good entertainment for the puppy puppy interacts with you when he's mouthing you you show him the tug toy he's going to catch that tug toy and play with you but the mistake what the parents do is they pull he pulls they pull he pulls then he's growling oh he's growling nice so currently he's a puppy he's, you're teaching him how to growl and then when the kid is doing the same thing the puppy will jump growl and jump so he'll learn that when mm -hmm. i growl and jump humans get scared and that is when he starts learning how to bite people more <laughs> whenever he does not like something he'll go and catch that person's hand or something like that so that you leave him kind of like so it's again a very important thing that puppy's mouthing has to be kind of controlled in the sense they are not going to stop mouthing till the time their first set of tooth teeth fell, uh, fall off and the new set comes in but you can control that part like again there are negative reinforcements also no punishment is required negative reinforcements in the sense is mouthing you do a tethering part of it sit near him you pet him he mouths you you take your hand away he cannot reach you because he is on the leash <laughs> so those are all different different uh, training techniques which we teach the parents depends what they are comfortable with and what they can use it positively so basically all new pet parents should remain calm and no big reactions so we have a few questions actually quite yeah. a few questions that have come live yeah. um deepa is asking which breed is easiest to train all breeds are easy to train that's nothing like you know that like breed you cannot train anyone so like as i said we train uh, dogs with disabilities also hearing issues sight issues etc so the techniques are a little different depending on breed to breed the techniques used are breed specific kind of like you know because there are some breeds which are very very agile they need a lot of exercise so the training is a different for them like a golden retriever labrador then uh, german Dalmatians, shepherds german shepherds rottweilers belgian oh, malinois the different type of a training because there we okay. have to train them for uh, different reasons also but uh, the easiest ones to train are the indie dogs the strays <laughs> which are adopted at a young age they okay. are so much foodies you can train them and you can train them for you can say hours and they'll keep on doing whatever you want them to do till the time you have the food in your hand <laughs> <laughs> but they have a lot of stamina easiest to train in the sense but easy to kind of lose them also they can lose it if they are not kind of uh, kept properly any small abuse they will remember it and then they the aggression sets in it's very easy to get that aggressive behavior from a indie pup like you know and often it happens because what once the training is over the pet parents don't continue the training they say oh, now my dog knows everything so then they let him do whatever he wants to do Oh. everything goes for a toss and then when he is doing something later on after 2 3 months or he is not doing i let me train him when he start they start training him gone he is not going to like it he is going to growl at you so, so as again as if there are kids in the house usually go for breeds which are little sober they are not very mouthy in the sense like you know you, you take a case of a uh, certain breeds which are like a small breeds i'll give an example the small breeds usually when they don't like somebody touching they'll just turn around and snap but the large breeds will give you a warning they'll first growl and then snap then again it depends on the size of your house if you have a large house you can go for the large breeds otherwise you can stick to the smaller breeds then again there are some health issues with somebody which like you know you have problems allergic to certain fibers like you know hair of the dog coming around and then you have a lot of issues respiratory issues so there are dogs which kind of like poodles then uh, uh, bichons their fur does not fall and they are kind of the no allergies etc once the hair fall is not there kind of like yeah. but otherwise usually other dogs you can expect three seasons when you'll uh, face the hair falls a kind of every season change you'll find that there are a lot of hair falling again it also depends on the diet of the doggy also So all these things are there <laughs> then siddesh is asking i watch a lot of canine training videos on instagram those trainings are very different from regular dog dog trainings correct yeah See, again it depends like how we uh, what we do is we use reward based training methods where there is nothing like which is like cruel or harsh or we don't abuse the puppies to come and compel them to do certain things 
we let the puppy fall into the sequence and let him willingly do certain things that type of a training goes for a long particular period so i think okay. canine canine also is using something similar so depends which because there are a lot of canine you know dog training uh, institutes trainers etc who write canine so yeah. now it again depends whether you are on the correct one or you are on the wrong one rashi is asking my dog tends to pull on the leash during walks what's an effective way to teach loose leash loose leash walking sorry yeah that's very important again uh, which breed is hers can she tell again this is breed specific you can tell her and a little okay. bit of training leash training is required where you can correct this behavior the easiest one is when you don't see the doggy's nose you turn back in a different direction continuously keep okay. on doing that <laughs> so you can write it to her like <laughs> and then of, of course keep rewarding for good behavior yeah but always you cannot uh, reward once you you know when you are walking sometimes you don't have anything but the reward of petting your dog on the head and giving him nice cuddles etc when he does something correct on the walks also is a good particular reward for him <laughs> uh desmond is asking hello nikhil what are the essential commands every dog should know how do i teach my dog basic commands like sit stay and come yeah that's what uh, there are totally about 16 to 18 basic commands which we need to train our uh, puppies for and sit stay and come are the initial ones so that's also very easy so if you need some guidance you can go through just appoint a trainer they will be able to help you out in that and stay command is very uh, good because the door stays are very important in uh, cities like uh, mumbai or any particular city which has got lot of population you're traveling you're going up and down via lifts etc so the door stays are very important where the doggy sits before a door is open once the door is open you tell him to come and he follows you so again the stay command is very important to see to it that they stay way before they like otherwise what happens is we are going for a walk you open the door the dog is out before you mm. okay the lift yes. door opens somebody is coming in this dog wants to go out so mm. again these are all the problems which can be solved by tra- training them for the sit and the stays coming back to some of our questions uh, again coming back to again concerns of new parents Um, now a lot of people are working and they have to leave the dog home alone so what should new pet parents do in order to keep their dogs calm usually what happens is if the training has been set like from the puppy age that they know okay they are going to go out for work etc a puppy can be left alone for 6 to 8 hours depending on what breed it is again and how well you have trained when they were young so otherwise a separation anxiety see, uh, creeps in mm-hmm. they tend to then destroy things etc so it has to be started with a very small time zone like initially you go out for 2 minutes come back home go out for 4 minutes come back home then go out for half an hour come back home so it depends on how so that time you need to keep a baby camera at home to see to it what your puppy is doing actually and there are ways okay. to kind of overcome that anxiety when you're leaving your house and going out so the puppy feels confident enough and stays alone keep him busy with different toys there is a kong toy which comes when you are leaving you can just keep about four five kongs over there filled with his food stuff he'll be nice and uh, busy for about at least one and a half two hours depending on the breed again the size of the kong and the food what you are pushing into the kong so if it is a short duration like 2 to 3 hours it's easy to kind of distract them and you do it in such a way that they don't remember that you're not around so that separation awesome. anxiety comes into picture a lot like so you need to train them for that part and then you can easily go out leaving your puppy home alone like so make sure that he has enough toys to keep him distracted no what happens is usually the toys don't help okay you okay. if you 90% of the time you'll find once you're left the puppy is little bit hyper initial first couple of minutes and then he's mm-hmm. sleeping at one spot he may just get up from there go to some other spot okay so keeping him busy with the kong toys if you have 2 to 3 hours in hand like you are going out and you don't want to leave him alone he is not going to basically uh, be comfortable there are toys which are food based toys like which you fill the food inside and keep it for them and they will be busy searching so before you do that we also train the puppies for the search command or the find particular game where their food is hidden here and there and they keep on locating using their nose eat that food go to the next spot again eat that food go to the next spot so the kongs help you a lot like in that so if you train them with that it's easy what about leaving a art- article of clothing with your scent on it yes you, that's that what that it comes into training so if you have in the bedroom you close that door you leave your clothes behind keep your 
bedroom uh, fan on full speed so that the aroma of your own clothes are coming from there many a time the dog don't understand that you're gone from here but your scent is coming from there so you sit, sit near that particular door 90% of the time so if you have a baby camera you can see that <laughs> but then wouldn't he want to like go in because he thinks you're inside no no he will try that for a couple of minutes once he knows its door is not opening he'll just sit over there there sometimes you keep small uh, you know soft music playing also on the background oh, yeah. that also helps so that there are many things which can help you to solve the overcome that separation anxiety like again it all depends on the pet parent many a time we train them they say oh no we went out you're crying so we came back again we did not complete the training yet. so then nobody can help you <laughs> so the puppy is training you when i cry come back <laughs> So Anand is asking, "Hello, Nikhil. My dog sometimes shows aggression towards other animals. How can I work on socializing them better?" So that was our my next question. Yes. The puppy socialization and their misconceptions. What happens initially when they are puppies? People think no puppy should meet other dogs also. That is socialization. Socialization means something different. The puppies need to know that. they can be handled by different people they can be touched by different people they have to be more human friendly socialize mm-hmm. with humans more than other dogs so the minute you start interacting when they are puppy and the training period when you start interacting with other dogs they are picking up the wrong habits of the other dog if that dog is not trained he is going to train him for all the wrong doings plus sometimes he's got a negative experience when he was a puppy with a large dog and now suddenly he is grown up so now he is going to do- try dominating the other dogs thinking that they also will come to harass him so mm-hmm. what happens is a lot of things it all depends we need to study those particular issues case to case basis like how is their behavior towards other dog what he is actually doing can you control him when he is in that position can you make him do a sit can you distract him what can you do so accordingly the training program goes so in small cities you have that problem because there are small roads one dog sees the other dog he goes baba the other dog goes baba people then pull that dog all that tug of war is going on and this all starts from the puppy stage like if you have not controlled that that time there is a time when you have to make him meet other dogs so that he becomes dog friendly also but then you have to select the dogs which your puppy should meet you should always aim for a little senior dog which is sober so once they have met them then you can let them meet other dogs because then they are not going to have that aggressive type of an issue aggression type of an issue based on the negative experience which is got from the other dog always a positive experience from other dogs will help that particular puppy to grow better and be around with other dogs also but this is a problem with 50% of my clients like where they say that my dog is very aggressive with the other dog when we go for a walk and this and that so then there is another training set comes which comes in which they need to follow and major problem comes when you are taking your dog once in a day to for a walk other two three times in a day the walkers are taking them for a walk you don't know what's happening behind, behind your scenes so that also needs to be checked so every behavior issue we need to evaluate what are the conditions that your dog is in what can he do and what he cannot do accordingly we kind of program the training part of it like and all listen like sit with the trainer and listen to all his instructions yeah 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 <laughs> so chirag is asking at what age should i enroll my puppy in obedience class which is also our next question when to start obedience training as as i said uh, the puppies are very smart to learn the day he comes into your house the training starts the earlier the better okay so like if i've got a puppy which is say 40 days old 30 days old which has come in i start with the toilet training for the first 10 days 15 days and then after once he is 60 days old then i'll start the obedience training because then he is going to respond to your calls he's going to respond to your treats and everything better but the training starts the day he comes to your house that is very important the name etc you can start training him for the name because you need to teach him his name also So it's a very simple process of how to train them to learn their own name like and also what if what if you get um, you decide to adopt a little older dog which is not really trained well can you train yes i have got the, my clients many of them who have adopted them from shelters from hospitals mm-hmm. some abandoned dogs like on the streets which have been tied up on the pole or tree and they have gone have been left over there those type of dogs also we can train them and sometimes it's like unbelievable they kind of respond much much faster and better than other dogs because now they know they are in a safe environment 
they are getting all goodies when they are being trained so they learn those things very fast and i have got a puppy which was abandoned in pune one family from india or sorry mumbai got them from there he picked up all the obedience training commands you can say within 20 to 25 days wow. it was so fast and the place command which is very important which we i we usually train them for i take him to the staircase and i tell him go and place he will go into his bedroom and sit on the mat so it's like that you know so it all depends on how you are basically keeping them once you have adopted a doggy from the streets or from any shelters it's very important that first you need to give them their comfort zone simultaneously train them for certain things which is very essential because you don't know the background of that dog what's happened to him in the past so it's very important that we need to take care of that so basically miracles can happen when you show yeah. love and kindness yes with love and kindness 100% the minute you become strict and become little bit you know you if you st- start scolding your puppy for not doing certain things the negative experience starts and then somewhere along the line he is going to learn how to rebel what do new pet parents get wrong sometimes a lot of things basically again they get overwhelmed with uh, inputs from different different websites social media friends etc so mm-hmm. i would say do your homework study properly what you are getting into how to do it see what is going to be more comfortable for you and the home environment where you are located or where you are staying depending on your family members also and then accordingly take a call because there will be so many things which are kind of pumped in into your head like don't do this do this do this do that don't do this so you need to identify the correct ones and in that again the trainers will be able to assist you in that you know better way if you are confused always take professional help i would say that even if if it could be like you don't go for the full training you just call a professional trainer take a cue from them for a evaluation session or something like that and get a kind of an idea like what you should be doing and then if you feel that yeah you would like to go for the full training sessions or something you can always go for it but right. again a training sessions in a city is very important for the dog is to keep him safe as well as to keep the family safe and the others around safe you must have read about so many things happening in societies yes wrong yes. things happening in societies like you know so we need to be careful we need to keep our pets safe as well as the others and right. in and, that, and in this world you will find that you have in a society of say 100 people you will have 70 who are dog haters and 30 are dog lovers so correct. we need to change that equation yeah. to 50 50 at least in another couple of years <laughs> same it, it, there, there was an incident that happened in our building it was a little unfortunate and now they have requested all of, all of our dogs to be muzzled and that's unfortunately yeah, because now they can't trust all dogs but then there is my dog a golden retriever who loves kids and loves playing but a lot of people misconstrue that kind of behavior as aggression their excitement when they jump on correct them. so again like i said then you need to be with a trainer and listen to him and make sure that those kind of incidents don't happen yeah correct and what happens is when you know that your dog is little jumpy and he likes to greet people in such a way so whenever somebody comes to you first you tell them wait you make him to a sit and a stay take your hand near the collar of the doggy so that he does not jump he can, does not get a chance to jump at the opposite person or a kid that kind of controls a lot of things like and then once you know he is settled then you can tell that person to approach him. that way you can and of, you know and of course that the person who's opposite especially with young kids you need to learn how to approach a dog yeah because not all dogs will react the same so you need to kind of right. first tell them to hold on and then settle your dog first and then you can tell ask the other person to approach him that's the easiest way and once or twice if that person has met and if he is not scared or something then they can meet but usually it's a good practice to make your doggy go into a sit position and then you can tell the other person to just come and pet him like again it all depends again if your dog likes being pet if he is not like bring- like he does not like being petted then it's going to be disaster then right which which brings me to the next question so what are the misconceptions behind dangerous dog breeds now what are, so in the uk they banned the xl bully there are pit bulls there are rottweilers there are dobermans or german shepherds that are termed as, as extremely aggressive animals Correct. so and everyone has this um misconception that they are one man dogs they will listen to one man and they'll pretty much attack everybody else it again it comes down to the training part of it basic training and the consistency like in mumbai itself i have a family which has got a, a pit bull and they were worried okay, if my uh, his wife was expecting when my baby comes what will i do i said your doggy is such a sweet 
art life you know not doing anything is playful you know what we have heard like this like this like this. so i had to be with them when the baby came home from day one i oh. uh, trained them how to introduce the baby to the dog but it's again uh, the, the breed specific issues are there when the dog is not kind of trained properly it all depends again if the dog has got a negative experience with humans then again yes those dogs are going to cause a little issues so getting into a wrong side of a dog which is known to do all these things is again bad so you as a pet parent you need to control that part train that the dog from initial stages don't delay the training there i will not say you wait for 6 months and then start training 2 months to 4 months the training should get over and then consistently keep on practicing nothing goes wrong so dogs like pit bulls and xl bullies and they can be real sweethearts no those are the um, bully kuttas which are there the dogs which are used in fights etc mm. okay there have been instances from punjab side many of the north uh, northern states they tell the family see this dog is so nice you pull the yours he'll be good with the puppy there's that nothing mm-hmm. happens when the puppy they fine when the doggy becomes big the kid is still at the small height because the dog is grow faster than him then they try the same thing and then the issues start up those dogs you, you should avoid you know those mountain dogs which are there like you go to lay ladakh there are okay. so beautiful dogs around on the roads you'll they can give uh, like a run of the particular money for any of the breed dogs around in india but you cannot keep them because they are scavengers you can you can train oh. them but you never know what will happen so those type of breeds you should be little bit away from and they why because they are from the cold region now you get them to bombay they are not going to survive over here with that particular climate like people have siberian huskies they have saint bernards uh lot of other particular breeds which are from the cold region as well as from the heat a hot region like Sar- siberian huskies go through a lot of climate changes drastic climate changes cold as well as hot but in mumbai what happens is that we have humidity also along with the heat mm. so that's one thing which is bad for their skin and then the issues start so that's the reason people the vets say you have to keep them in air conditioned environments and all that stuff but if you are in a proper place any breed will be okay with but not in mumbai like saint bernards have a lot of skin issues huskies have a lot of skin issues if they are not kept properly because of be the climate yeah because of the climate couple of more questions yeah. um siddhi siddhi is asking what role does positive reinforcement play in training highly and how can i incorporate it effectively yeah so like if it's a puppy you have one second to make him register that yeah this was good you behaved you give the treat to him that's positive reinforcement so whatever whenever they do something good you re- reinforce them with something good oh. either a treat or lot of good pets scratches below the ears chin etc the puppy should feel good about it so it, this gives a chance for the puppy to repeat that behavior again and again so it becomes a habit of that puppy to do that behavior and then you don't need treats etc once it becomes a habit so like when we train them for a sit command initially we use the treat treats to when he sits we give him a treat when he sits we give him a treat and now you just tell once he's trained you just sit he'll sit you can have a distance sit also like he's up at least 20 feet away from you you'll say sit and that puppy should sit there that's with the level of training you should put in the city like mumbai or any particular populated city like a sit and a stay solves lot of issues <laughs> for a dog <laughs> yeah stay special so positive <laughs> reinforcement is 100% a very good training method but during that positive reinforcements also there are sometimes we need to use negative reinforcements negative reinforcement Explain. is not punishing or something like supposing now i want the puppy to stay when i'm putting the food bowl down he should not immediately ah. jump into the food bowl and start eating so when i say right. eat that is the time he should eat so as soon as i'm taking it down and he comes here i take it away so okay. that's negative Understood. reinforcement Okay, I'll give you a simple example. I was very recently I was training one uh, German Shepherd. He was trained for the door stays. So I open the door. He has to be sitting next to me. I go out. I call the puppy comes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I was in a cold region. So once I opened the door, the puppy went out. I shut the door and I came back inside the house. Okay. The puppy was outside for half an hour. So after that day, he never left my side. He will wait for me to go out and come back. That's negative reinforcement. I'm not punishing him. Understood. I'm just telling him that don't do this next time. <laughs> <laughs> so Mayuri is asking, please share some tips for making healthy home cooked meals at home. So a lot of people have this question. So I will try and get a nutritionist on board, and maybe we can have that discussion yeah. then. 
that because that is the best is extremely important correct alisha asks when is the best time to start socializing my puppy with other dogs and people as i said you can I socialize them once they are vaccinated and trained for the basic obedience commands but the socialization should be with only sober elderly dogs initially for the first few weeks mm -hmm. let that puppy know that there are something like him his particular type of people are sorry the dogs around and they are good so first day if you have met a big dog who's given one tap to that puppy he is not going to like any other dog he is going to run away from other dogs because he got a negative experience so again balance it out if you are not sure go to a place where there are a lot of dogs walking around be little away every day inch in the distance between the other dogs and your dog so that is the easier way to kind of you know get him into the doggy world and you'll also know which dogs are good and which dogs are bad that time when you're sitting there so it's very simple like you know people say no my dogs are very aggressive towards kids when they are playing they want to kind of lunge at them so i tell them okay when they are playing you sit 20 feet away from them if 20 feet again is reacting go to 22 feet if he stop reacting come back to 20 feet next time next time try 18 feet if he is reacting go back to 20 feet so that way slowly slowly inch in towards them you will find after a couple of weeks he is sitting next to them 6 feet away and not react and it's 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 sort of like my dog lewis <laughs> all the cats in our building has slapped his face yeah. so now he gives all the cats a wide berth while walking and i think any time <laughs> he sees a cat he just like goes away <laughs> yeah so many time people say no what to do cats are there in our building my dog is always running behind i tell them let him go once once he'll get next time he'll not go <laughs> <laughs> he exactly go back for thing but that's the it's just like for saying but that also is like you know it all depends on dog to dog how much drive they have to go behind the cats like my dog used to not trouble my building cats because we used to feed the cats so those mm -hmm. cats used to come and pull his tail play with his tail he would not say anything but any outside cat comes towards him <laughs> the prey drive kind of gets enabled <laughs> so now we're like really running out of time we'll go through a couple of questions and then whatever questions that are unanswered i'll send them to you and then maybe we can have them answered later jean is asking what are the most important items to puppy proof my home for a new arrival which i think you've gone through you have your puppy yeah. pads your few puppy toys the kong toys and there are on the you know, youtube you'll find a lot of uh, do it yourself kind of you know ideas for making toys for your puppies don't go for those expensive ones which they will not even use many a times one thing is very important don't give them hide bones those white ones which are there the raw hide out. ones yeah yeah because those are the ones which cause a lot of health issues at a later date or immediately they can get into trouble like that's the reason so whatever you're picking up see to it that it is of good quality the toys are of good quality but i would say pick up a few from the toy a pet shop make many of the other toys on your own it's a good the particular uh, way to kind of you know give him variety of options so also if i could also weigh in um uh, whenever you go to a toy store go to a, if you can go to a good one and speak to the owner they have a ton of advice and yeah. they were very helpful with my dog in in the right toy for them for the right size for the breed everything and how much they feed so they were very good with us yeah so you need to be very careful because when you go to certain uh, toy shops they want to sell you everything you need to identify yeah, the good ones that's also there yeah <laughs> but the one that i went to she was very helpful yeah <laughs> same so goes with same goes with the groomers also when they go when you take the, your puppy for a grooming session see to it that he is comfortable if he is not willing to go enter that place understand that he's giving you a kind of a signal that no i don't like this try something else uh jinesh is asking how important is consistency in dog training and how do i handle issues like barking chewing or digging yeah again the digging depends on which breed you have got like uh jack russells if you don't allow them to dig they get very hyper and notorious <laughs> because usually they are they want they to dig something yeah, yeah they are very 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 they have that digging drive like you know if you don't so take them to a beach or something let them satisfy themselves that way barking again there is a training which you can incorporate where you can put in a quiet command train him when you say quiet he should be quiet kind of chewing again for what reason he is chewing whether he is a puppy whether he is a adult dog 
again depends on that if it's a puppy and chewing then there are ways to get kind of you know get it as i said if he's mouthing he's teething he's going to chew because he wants to get that bite to satisfy his itch which is there and he's exploring different different areas so again you mm -hmm. have to identify what age that puppy is and what's happening kind of last question how do you think dogs feel when their humans do things that confuse them we've all seen those videos on instagram so you need to repeat that because i am below the s with one big aircraft large aircraft and i could not hear <laughs> how do you think dogs feel when their humans do things that confuse them we've all seen those videos on instagram but what's the real impact on pet like when you confuse them like any example which you know uh, the, you know that little big that um curtain that curtain where you drop the curtain and you disappear and the dog is kind of confused where you went like those kind of that's okay you can play all those I'm games with that. that yeah yeah that that all you can do If your dog is smart enough, he is going to judge it within uh, two three tries, because the scent is going to help him identify where you are. So that's the reason. Like whenever we kind of train our puppies, we introduce the find command, so they start using their nose. There's also the thing you told me a long time ago, where uh, it also depends on the when you're talking to your dog. It also when you're training your dog, it also depends on your on the tone. If you're going to say. For example, oh, you're an idiot in a sing-song voice. He still, but if you say it in a different tone, then he'll understand it different. So you can say a lot of stupid things in a fun tone, and he will listen. See, usually, what happens is dogs don't know our language. Correct. But we have put in that word means sit is a sit, like you know. But they observe your body language. So, like the dogs which are having a issue with hearing. how do i tell them to sit is the body language i'll just do this the dog sits i do this the dog da it goes down i do this and keep so he give me a paw so it's just the body language which helps them to identify what exactly we want to communicate so those things which are confusing it's good it's a game which will keep their mental particular stimulus on so those type of games are good confuse them sometimes let them become smarter <laughs> and any any last advice that you have for new pet parents well only one thing if they do something good praise them a lot something bad don't tell them anything except you when you see it happening then that no should come in that's and, it because uh, again shower lots of love and kindness that's what i said when they do something good praise them a lot like as if they have done something out of the world that's the best way to bond with them <laughs> Thank you so much for this session Nikhil. Okay. This was lovely, very informative and I hope a lot of new pet parents take away something from this. Sure. Any Thank any help last time to connect with me no problem. <laughs> yeah. And and um, okay. and Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time out, and hopefully we'll chat again. Sure. And you have any questions which are pending, then just send them. I'll just uh, reply to them and give it back to you. I will. I will. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.